Happy New Year, everybody. Your favorite brokering junkie is back with another video. For those of you who have been watching my videos for a while now, you would know that Brill Cream is probably my all-time favorite classic product. And I'm on a quest to try out and collect all the kinds of Brill Cream I can get my hands on. I was on eBay recently and I found something that I thought was really cool and I promise you this is absolutely not clickbait. I found these vintage bottles of Brill Cream from the 1950s, full with product, unopened, sealed, and untampered. I bought two bottles so that I can keep one in my collection and one to open and try out and that's what this video is for. For those of you who just clicked on this video and don't know what Brill Cream is, Brill Cream is a cult classic when it comes to hair products. It is one of the first, if not the first, hair product advertised directly towards men and it's the number one men's hair product in the world at some point, or at least for, the, um, for a good portion of the first half of the 20th century. Brill Cream is the world's largest selling hairdressing. Over 60 million packages sold a year. It was created in the UK in 1928. It's a hair cream that is designed to slick your hair in place and make it easy to comb and easy to manage, dandruff free and super shiny. Excitingly clean, disturbingly healthy, so masculine. What? It's known for its shine, which is why it's called Brill Cream because it's a combination of words brilliant and cream. And after, not long after it was made, it really blew up and a lot of men around the world started using it and it was especially popular in the United States as well. It saw its peak in the 50s due to all the rockabillies and it saw its decline somewhere around the 60s. Brill Cream, however, is still around today, but given its history of being passed on to different owners and different companies over time, Brill Cream's formula has changed up to the point where there are even different variants around the world. The United States version, for example, is currently owned by a company called Comb, and it is runnier, greasier, and shinier compared to all the other variants of Brill Cream I've used. Everywhere else around the world, Brill Cream is owned by Unilever, but by each region's own respective branch. The um, Southeast Asian version, for example, is thicker and less shiny compared to all the other variants, while the um, British and European Union's current formula is um, not as thick as the Asian version, but a lot shinier, but still less shiny than the American formula, but still really shiny. But because the Brill Cream I'll be using today, the vintage Brill Cream right here, was made in Ireland, I'll be making comparisons to the current British slash EU formula right here. I've always wanted to know how the um, formula today differs from the formula back then. This is the um, current Brill Cream, which I actually am using my hair right now. I One dab will never do me, unlike what the ads back in the day used to say. Brill Cream, a little dab will do ya. Brill Cream, you look so debonair. Brill Cream, the gals will pursue ya. Simply rub a little in your hair. I decided to check out how much a bottle like this would cost back in the day. So every time I research for a product just to get um, information on any type of um, classic hair product, it's really difficult to get information on. So I would normally research them through ads. So it's a lot of visual research. And according to all the ads I've been seeing, this was considered new in 1949. Therefore, I would say um, the bottle design, I mean. So bottles like these for Brill Cream did not exist until at least 1949, but I can tell that, I can probably estimate that this is from at least the mid 50s because the earlier jars from the early 50s and 1949, the Brill Cream sign used to be the middle with um, surrounded by a black border, but this one is no black border and the Brill Cream sign is just on top over here. And according to some of these ads, well, some ads say different things, but according to one ad I found, the smallest Brill Cream jar was one shilling and eight pence. Well, old British currency works in some weird way and I really didn't know how it worked until I researched for this video. And that in today's money would be about two British pounds, I believe. And this jar over here says five pence off, like D means pence back then. So that would mean that it's um, 
one shilling, three pence, which is approximately um, 1.49 British pounds. And, and well, today that's 1.49 British pounds, which is about $2 US dollars. But I actually bought one jar of this for about 25 British pounds. And that's 32, 33 US dollars. And I got two of these jars. Well, the main point of this video is so that I can use some of the stuff in my hair to see how it compares to today's formula, but I can't guarantee that it would perform the exact same way it would perform back in the day. I mean, it's been sealed in a jar for at least 60 years in a way that's sort of a good thing so you know that it hasn't been in contact with air or any excess moisture so you know there's no signs of mold in there. But what might happen to some of the ingredients about all this time? I mean, if anything, the scent might be a little off, but you never know until you crack it open. Now before I scroll down to the comment section below and find some of you guys asking me stuff like, but Squinty, what is the expiration date? Isn't it past its expiration date? Let me tell you that you only live once and it never hurts to try. I mean, what's the words kind of do to my hair anyway? It won't make it fall out. And it's not like I'll wake up tomorrow morning to find a wizard at the foot of my bed just zapping his wand saying, whoosh. You have cancer because you use a 60 year old hair product. Well, it never hurts to try, so let's get right into it. So we just washed my hair and stepped out of the shower and then blow dried as usual, but left it a little damp, which is why it looks a little slicked back right now because if anything, the dampness, the slight amount of dampness is holding it in, but I guarantee you there's absolutely no product in there. My hair is product free right now. So I'm ready to try it out. I mean, the worst possible case scenario Using this vintage Brill Cream right here on my hair will lead to my inevitable death. Now, it'll probably give me a scalp irritation or an allergic reaction, but not get a lot of allergies. And should a scalp irritation happen, I guess I pretty much know what to do next because I generally take um, pretty good care of my hair. So, let's open it up right now. Oh, that's 1950s air right over there. It smells a little like wax. I mean, as in crayons. It smells like a Crayola somehow. And just look at it. I don't know if you can see it, but it kind of dried off in the top a little. It just looks like it dried off a little somehow. But I'll just go ahead and shake it a little. So we shake the product a little, and I'm just going to go ahead and scoop it out right now. It actually looks greasier than the standard brittle cream today. And it's significantly greasier as well. God, this stuff is oily. So you can see right here that it has a really oily layer on top of it. It looks significantly greasier than the brittle cream today. Now the smell is just starting to um, fill up the whole bathroom. I mean, now it doesn't only smell like Crayolas, it kind of smells a little like burnt metal. Now I use generally use slightly more than this when I use Brill Cream, so I'm going to apply just a tiny um, finger dab. It's this much more, and I should be done. Now, everything just feels so much greasier. That's just how it is. I mean, it just looks greasier. It feels significantly oilier than today's formula. And applying it to my hair just 
makes my hair feel altogether greasier as well. And obviously because of this, it's definitely shinier than um, today's UK formula for Brill Cream. It looks almost as shiny, it probably looks like it's on the same level of shine as the American Brill Cream, the current American Brill Cream formula at least. And due to the amount of oil in here, it is actually slicker than the current formula. Just gonna go ahead and form it apart. But seriously, the smell on this one is a lot stronger than, um, I mean, it probably didn't smell like this back then, but the scent itself is pretty um, strong right now. It's definitely a lot stronger than today's formula. I mean, the one in the current UK formula smells a little like lemon shape. It smells like lemon shaving soap, but it's sort of like a subtle scent, and you can't really smell the hair so much after you apply it in. But now, styling it actually feels really similar to today's Brill Cream. It's just obviously like a T-Bone saying, a lot oilier. But the control is pretty much similar in this one, just with more slickness. But given that this one is more slickness, I find it a little easier to style with compared to the modern British formula for Brill Cream. So after a few more slicks of the comb, I'm just going to take care of my side switch here. I'll just go ahead and call it done, and we'll see how it performs throughout the um, rest of the day. If there's another difference I notice is that it actually keeps my sides tightly, uh, more tight than the, um, the current formula for Brill Cream, because there's more slickness to it, obviously. So right now I'm just going to go ahead and show you guys what it looks like in my hair under my bathroom lighting. So earlier when I opened up the Brill Cream, I said the top looked like it dried off a little, but it actually did not dry off at all. It just um, retained sort of a round shape after sitting in the top here for quite a while, but it was actually still really greasy. It just looked a little firmer than the current formula and, well, even shinier, it still somehow looks like it has more of a form to it compared to today's formula, which is why it kind of looked like it had a shape of its own. So it looked a little like it's dry, but it actually was still really greasy to touch. I actually touched it a little for shaking. And then I shook the jar again, just to be sure. What just smearing in my hands actually made it feel more like a really light hold brilliant teen actually just like a a creamy light hold a really greasy light hold pomade it felt like it actually has more hold than today's formula but i'm gonna stop talking right now and let's see how it performs throughout the rest of the day now because my elevator is really good lighting i just really have to show what my hair looks like under this particular lighting over here Amazing glossy reflective shine and the level of shine over here actually looks really similar to the current um, American form of Brill Cream. So if you want a Brill Cream that exists today, that'll give you a look that is very similar to the vintage form of Brill Cream. American Brill Cream would be your best bet because the level of shine over here looks really similar to that. But so far, it's been about half an hour since I applied the Brill Cream in my hair. And I can say that the hold so far is actually better than both the American and British formulas. Okay, so we're about um, seven hours in and you can see that the shine is still very much there. And there are some very, very slight changes to my hair. Well, you can see that part of the side over here, there's a bit of um, 
top part of the unparted side collapsed a little bit, but that's really no biggie because my hair normally looks a lot worse at the end of the day if I don't recomb it all, if I use a product like Brill Cream, but I can guarantee that I did not do any single recomb at all today, and I was actually quite surprised that my hair actually does look almost the same as how it was when I first dealt with it. But to be fair, it was a cold day today and there was very light to moderate activity because I spent most of the day just sitting down. And um, if anything, I just rode my bicycle for about five, six minutes in total collective time. And I spent the rest of the day just um, sitting down uh, in the library, just studying for my next exam um, next week. But well, I hardly did anything, but usually even with some slight activity like this, my hair would just flop more if I used the um, modern formula, any modern formula of Brill Cream. Well, maybe it would look a little similar to the Asian Brill Cream when it comes to endurance. But I can say that the whole, the endurance in this one, at least in this weather, is actually better compared to any modern formula of Brill Cream. It even has a hole that's um, a notch better than the... Um, Asian Brill Cream, which is which has the best hold compared to all the other variants. So you can also see that my sides over here on the um, part of the side is still very much tucked back, like how it was when I left it when I first initially started with it. Because if I just used the um, regular European formula, if I slick my sides back using that modern formula of Brill Cream, at the end of the day my sides end up being diagonal. But with this one, it's still very much um, tucked back and it hardly changed. And the slickness is still very much there. The scent, however, I kind of do have a problem with it. Like, I wouldn't want to go around all day smelling like a burnt Crayola, and that's the very reason I wouldn't want to use um, vintage Brill Cream again. I mean, the scent right now has faded, but it still can smell a little bit. And it's not as strong as it was when I first um, applied it to my hair, but I still wouldn't want to go around smelling like a Crayola. It smells even worse than Murray's Black Beeswax, in my opinion. So right now I'm just uh, going to go back um, to my room and then I'll just um, take a shower and see how the washout goes on this product. Then I will also report on how my hair feels after um, the washout. So we'll see you then. All right, so I decided to put something to the test. You guys can tell that right now I have a pompadour, and guess what? I styled this half an hour ago with only vintage Brill Cream. I mean, I can style a pomp with um, the current form of European Brill Cream, but at this point, it would already be almost recognizable. I mean, if I style a pomp, I can style a pomp with um, European Brill Cream, but after a few minutes, some strands would just flop out with the general pomp shape still retained, but after half an hour, it would really deflate, so it would look more like a contour instead of a pompadour. But right now, even after a little more than half an hour, my pomp is pretty much still standing, and it is still very much a pompadour, and not much has actually changed. And I'm really am impressed by this. So now let's talk about the washout, as I promised earlier. Now, when it comes to the the um, the washout, I only used one round of shampoo, no conditioner. Usually with just one round of shampoo with any modern Brill Cream variant, it would be washed out with just completely one round of shampoo. With no shampoo and just water, it would leave behind just an oily, a slight oily residue. And a, one round of shampoo would just completely take care of that, so you have no more Brill Cream in your hair. But with vintage Brill Cream, one round of shampoo would knock out a majority of it. Most of it would actually be washed out, but I noticed that there is a very, very slight greasy buildup left. It's almost noticeable, but it's definitely um, there. But I imagine that this still washes out a lot easier compared to most of the other products that were available back in the 50s. So that's why a lot of people did like it. I mean, even though there is some slight greasy buildup left behind with one round of shampoo, it still does wash out compared to most of its contemporaries back then. Now. I really like this current formula, um, this um, vintage formula of Brill Cream. I mean, it has a hold that's better than the current Southeast Asian formula with the shine of the um, American formula. So it's pretty much the best of both worlds. 
and I don't really mind that it leaves behind a very, very tiny amount of buildup with just round of one round of shampoo. I mean, it's hardly noticeable, and even if it does leave some buildup behind, I am an oil-based pomade user, so I am very much accustomed to that already. And the only thing that puts me off from using Vintage Brill Cream is the scent. I mean, obviously, it probably didn't smell like that back in the day. And being sealed in a jar for over 60 years, it definitely would smell funny over time. So if it wasn't for the scent, and if this for Love Brill Cream is still available today, I would definitely pick it over um, anything else. Well, personally for me, I just really like the shine and what I can style with um, this formula Brill Cream. So I guess that's all I have to say um, about the vintage Brill Cream formula. And so now the case has been cracked, the mystery has been solved. I now know how 50s Brill Cream compares to um, today's variant of European Brill Cream. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe to this channel, click on the bell icon to not miss a single upload of the Squinny Show. I'll see you next time on the Squinny Show. Remember, the smart look is the Brill Cream look.